Okay, uh, this lecture is more miscellaneous information that is related to the net network layer of the OSI model. Uh, the first is in your um, course outline, it mentions circuit switching and packet switching. So the first thing we want to talk about this is what those are and how they relate to each other. Um, in the case of circuit switching, you have a dedicated connection from the source to destination. And typically an analogy is drawn uh, with landline telephones. There is a connection. Every discussion from you to the other person, the other person back to you, happen over the exact same circuit. Uh, packet switching means the communications is broken into chunks and sent over the network and may travel over different paths. I found this video on YouTube and this gentleman does a very good job at contrasting them. Talking about what they are is pretty much what you know I will say about it but he has really nice animations that he made. So instead of me trying to create a bunch of animations, which is time consuming, I thought I would just point you to this guy's uh, YouTube page. Uh, the other thing that is in your course outline is the discussion of network layer services. Uh, what are some of the services or things that happen at um, uh, layer three? Sorry, um, we have error control, which would be the frame check sequence, which we've already talked about. Uh, there's something called acknowledgments in the TCP three-way handshake, which I'm going to show you right here. So if a device wants to communicate, it sends a synchronized request to device two. Device 2 basically says, I acknowledge that you want to talk to me. I'm going to send you a synchronization request. And then device 1 would send an acknowledgement saying, I saw your synchronized request and your acknowledgement. I acknowledge those. So that three-way handshake happens for each packet or, as we'll see later, set of packets uh, to make sure that the communications is happening uh, correctly. And if it doesn't get all the packets or doesn't get a packet, it's obviously not going to send uh, an acknowledgement. Um, so error control um, has to do, one thing is dealing with, with packet loss. And this is basically uh, a simplified version. It's not really showing the three-way handshake. But at the very top under device one, uh, device 1 sends a chunk of data and it sets a timer basically saying this is the maximum length of time that I'm willing to wait for an acknowledgement. So in this first chunk of data, device 2 sees it, it sends an acknowledgement back, that acknowledgement happens before uh, the timer expired, so the timer would just be cleared. Now with the second chunk of data, again it sends the second chunk of data, and it starts that timer. Well, the red X basically indicates something went wrong with the packet. So the packet never made it to device two. Over on device one, our timer will expire and it'll say, hey, I didn't get an acknowledgement for data two. I'm going to retransmit data two. And this time, device two gets it and device two acknowledges it. So one of the ways that it deals with possible packet loss is this setting a timer, and if the timer expires, uh, retransmitting the data. Um, another issue that we need to deal with at the network layer is um, flow control. Um, so we have something called sliding windows that is basically the number of bytes that can be outstanding or sent not outstanding, sorry, sent before an acknowledgement is required. Um, that size of that sliding window 
can be increased or decreased over time to control the flow of data. Uh, we have an example of this on the next slide. Uh, so here we're going to assume that each data chunk is 1500 bits and the window size is 4500 bits. So what you'll see here is we, we send one, send two, send three, and then we get an acknowledgement which is basically I acknowledge getting 4500 send me data 4. So it'll go data 4, data 5, data 6 and then device 2 will send an acknowledgement and said I acknowledge uh, 9,000 bytes send me data 7. So in this case that's an example of how the sliding window size would be. Uh, I haven't mentioned this yet but we've seen 1500 a lot. Uh, that's the maximum size of an IP packet and a lot of times that is referred to as the maximum transfer unit and on a lot of devices they default to the maximum transfer unit being 1500. Okay, congestion control. So if we have a lot of lost packets and or lost acknowledgements uh, there will be a lot of transmissions which are going to cause congestion on our network. If we get duplicate acknowledgements that can cause um, issues and the way we reduce this congestion is by decreasing the window size. Uh, so that talks about um, some error checking at uh, layer 3. 